Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And I just got back from the Apple Store in Chicago. Like I do every year, picked up my iPhone order. I got the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, plus the 15 right here. This is in a separate video. And even the new watch is coming in the mail later today. So be sure to subscribe because there's a ton of Apple content coming soon. The pickup process was pretty seamless, a little busy. The guy that helped me out actually has worked every single iPhone launch since the original iPhone. So he had some really cool stories to tell. But anyways, I'm going to unbox the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. I do have the blue and natural titanium in these colors. So I'm excited to see the difference between the two. By the way, there's something new that you might not have seen in other unboxing videos in this video. And obviously there is a little bit of a difference in the camera between the Pro Max and the Pro with that 5X optical zoom versus 3X optical zoom. But anyways, let's go ahead and unbox the new iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. Let's get started. Here are the new Apple iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max with their corresponding colors, natural and blue titanium. Even the Apple logo up at the top, the text is that color. Now, before I actually open these up, I wanna show something off that you might not have seen. So I turned the lights down on purpose and also blurred out some sensitive information, but what we're gonna do is take a blue light flashlight and flash it on the back of the box. So down at the bottom of the box, you'll notice an icon pop up right there. And if I take the light away, there it goes. It's not there anymore. Now up towards the top, check it out. It says iPhone, the Apple logo, and also has that little icon right there. A quick closer look. There it is, iPhone right there. So if you're buying a used iPhone, maybe worth it to bring a blue light. Obviously they can just bring a genuine box, but maybe more likely to be a genuine iPhone. Or if you get one sealed, you can for sure know that it's a genuine iPhone with the blue light. We will open both of these and compare them in just a second, but first of all, the natural titanium, right? They're a pretty unique color, I would say. The sides are also gonna be a little bit different of a shade. Uh, we'll dive into that in just a second, but continue through. This is a first from Apple. In Apple's signature braided style, a USB Type-C, the USB Type-C cable for charging. Unfortunately, no brick included. Not that I expected there to be one, but again, this is the first USB-C iPhone. Last but not least, designed by Apple in California, your standard uh, getting started guide. It does only have eSIM. You can't use a physical SIM. Talk to your carrier about setting up an eSIM and then an Apple sticker. Should be just the exact same stuff in the box, but here is that blue titanium look. When it hits the light, you can definitely tell it's blue. When you look at it from an angle, it gets a decent amount darker. So here they are side by side. Drop a comment. Let me know which color you like more. These were the two I was torn between the most. Uh, I mean, even the other ones do look really nice, but these were just the two uh, that I was thinking about getting. Everything exact same in the box of the two. Let's peel that off, start the power on process of our device. There's that Apple logo, peel this one off. Boom, all right, let's turn this guy on. And we're gonna take a, while these boot up, we're gonna take a closer look at the actual hardware, the sides, that USB-C port. And there it is, down at the bottom, our USB Type-C port for charging. Data transfer speeds will be faster. Unfortunately, charging speeds didn't get a boost, which Apple definitely should have bumped up the charging speeds. Unfortunately, they did not. Uh, you've got microphones, speakers down at the bottom moving along. Also make note of just the different kind of brushed titanium look. This, I believe, is your 5G antenna on the side, and then the power button uh, when they're lined up to the top, the power button's in the exact same side, but you'll see the uh, max is a little bit longer. Make note of the camera bump. Looks very similar between the two. So even though you have a different lens uh, in the max, the bump looks about the exact same size. Along the top, absolutely nothing. And then on the left side is the brand new action button, which we'll fully test out a little bit later. And then our volume rockers, again, in the exact same spots when lined up with the top, with the Max just being a little bit longer. Now an actual close look at the difference between the two colors. Even the Apple logo reflects a little bit differently. Uh, the outline around the lenses is also different. Uh, so a couple of cool colors. You honestly can't go wrong with either of them. 
and of course the camera lenses. So you have a 48 megapixel main sensor on both of them, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens on both, and then a 12 megapixel telephoto on both. However, again, three times optical zoom on the regular Pro and five times optical zoom on the Max. We are all set up and ready to go on a very colorful start screen. I'm gonna run through the startup process, talk about anything that's noteworthy. Quickly want to point out that I can notice the bezels are a little bit smaller on the 15 Pro compared to the 14 Pro, uh, just slightly, but I can notice it when I look at it. Let's do a quick setup of Face ID. I'll try this around the camera, get started, position my face within frame, okay, up. A little bit of an audio feedback, that was really easy. First one is complete. Use with a mask, use uh, do not use with a mask. I'm gonna use with a mask. Now we're gonna have to do this again. Boom. Easy. So should be good to go. I'll do some testing to see if it's any faster than the previous iPhone. When you go to set up Siri, you could choose between five voices or hit choose for me. Four? I'm Siri. Choose the voice. Is the regular one? Hi, I'm Siri. Hi, I'm Siri. Hi, I'm Siri. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose I'm going to hit choose for me. Hi, I'm Siri. Oh, okay. So it did default to four. So four was the default. Let's continue through. You have the option between light mode, dark mode, or auto. I always usually use mine on auto, but dark mode is always great with that OLED display. For those wondering, because it's an action button now for silent mode, you can toggle silent mode on and off in the control center. And onto that action button. Press and hold to turn silent mode on and off. So you still have that action. So press and hold. Silent mode, press and hold, ring, press and hold, silent mode. So you still have it, it's just not a flip, a switch to flip up and down, which is gonna be, I always play with it. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Uh, you can also customize the action button to open camera flashlight, other features, which we are going to customize now. So switch between silent, ring for calls and alerts, uh, focus, camera, you know, and pressing and holding is for silent mode and ring mode focus modes. If I want flashlight, press and hold. It turns it on, press and hold, turns it off. If I just tap it, I, I thought you could customize a tap, but apparently it's hold to turn on, which kind of makes sense because a tap you might accidentally trigger in your pocket. Uh, magnifier, turn your iPhone into a magnifying glass. Accessibility feature, no action. You can turn it off. Choose a shortcut to run one of your favorite apps. Uh, maybe you're recently played your favorites set a timer So there's a lot of different shortcuts that you can really customize to your liking All right, we are all set up and ready to go. Welcome to your iPhone. I'm not going to set up cellular for now I will of course do that uh, Stay tuned for my full review coming very soon But here it is the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max all set up ready to go Obviously a decent size difference. I go back and forth But I generally stick with the max because the battery life is generally better. I will test them both out uh, and really see if battery life is that big of a difference, but a decent sized difference in the hand, uh, this one being a lot more portable than the Max. First things first, this display goes up to 120 hertz, which looks like it's enabled by default. I can just tell it looks much more smooth than 60 hertz. Also, something I can always tell out of the box, I would like you to go into display and brightness and turn off true tone. This will uh, cool off the colors a little bit so but to me they look a little bit more natural true tone takes ambient light in and generally will just warm the colors up which i'm not a fan of i like it at night don't get me wrong true tone is fine at night but then in that case i'm just going to turn on night shift to make things a little bit warmer when i want to kind of wind down but during the day i always kind of turn true tone off next let's do a quick face unlock test so i'm going to press the button and you saw the padlock there in the dynamic island. Uh, let's try it with just swiping up. So boom, that's about as fast as the previous me, you know, placebo maybe seems a little bit quicker, but definitely not slower by any means. So that's good. It does seem to be very snappy with the face unlock. Next, I wanna show off something that's iOS 17 specific. So you'll have it on your previous iPhone models if you update to iOS 17. Now go into accessibility settings, touch, and then haptic touch. This is new and you'll see on pre, this is iOS 16 here. Haptic touch is set to fast by default or you can go to slow, but now there's an extra option and that's default 
fast and slow. So if I press it at the same time, you'll notice they're the exact same. So fast and default are the exact same between the two operating systems. Again, you can do this on your iPhone right now if it's on iOS 17, but now going into fast, if you're like me and miss 3D touch, which I miss all the time, I thought that was a great addition, but a little complicated. So I kind of get why they got rid of it, but let's do a quick test, boom. You see how much faster that really was to kind of pop up the press and hold? So it's a duration of just pressing and holding. So a definite uh, must, in my opinion, when setting up your new iPhone. And again, if you have an iPhone, a previous model updated to iOS 17, you can check out that feature. One quick test, let's press and hold the clock app. You'll see how much faster those settings popped up. So just boom, look at that. So the haptic feedback is almost at the exact same time, but just the animation is slower. So definitely look into that. Again, pressing and holding the action button will do something, but if you just keep tapping it, it just says hold for ring. So if I press and hold it, now I wanna go into settings and see if there's a way to change the action button uh, delay, which doesn't look like there is. It brought you to the same thing. So you can turn it to no action, but again, have the exact same one. So press and hold is the only thing you can do. It's not a, a remappable just press you have to actually press and hold it for a specific set default amount of time. Going into our camera app, we can see, just snap a quick picture right there, but you can tell 0 0.5, 0 0.5 uh, shows a lot more in the viewfinder. 2X is still there as a button, but then it goes to 3X or 5X. So 3X button isn't even uh, available there. If you press and hold, you can obviously uh, zoom it on up to 3X, but it's not a quick shortcut that you can press out of the box. One more quick feature I'd like to point out is when taking a picture here and you tap on the screen, it doesn't just show the exposure anymore, you'll see an F in the bottom left. You can turn that on or off and if you turn it on and snap a picture going into it, it is a portrait mode shot so you'll see how much more blurred that background is but if you go into edit and you'll see you can change the depth on it. So if you do want it less blurred, you can turn it all the way off. So just a regular photo, or you can blur it as much all the way to F1.4. Just a really nice feature that you don't have to go back and forth between uh, you know, portrait or photo mode. And speaking of portrait mode between the two, uh, you have 2X, 1X, and 5X options that pop up in the bottom left. And I'm sure you guessed it, 2X, 1X, and 3X on the Pro. Taking a quick shot with the 5X on both, digital zoom on the Pro, optical zoom on the Pro Max, it seems like uh, it takes advantage of a more natural bokeh effect with whatever's in focus. Does seem to be a little bit more clear, not as much noise or processing, but you'll notice with the digital zoom when you look at things in the background, such as the cloth on my sound uh, dampener, you'll see that it's a little more blurry out of the Pro Max because of course that focal length is a little bit different. It's not using digital zoom. And even on the front, it looks like the uh, flashlight that's up front is more in focus on the Pro than the Pro Max. And that is of course because it is optical zoom. Now let's take a look at the 3X. And don't get me wrong, I'm really zooming in on these. So they look very similar. I'm gonna have to do some more testing, but when we do zoom in and take a look, it does seem like the 3X on the Pro is a little bit more clear than the Pro Max, but you know, not by much. You might get a little bit of a color science difference uh, between the two lenses, but overall, you know, I would, I guess, give a slight edge to the Pro uh, with the 3X and the Pro Max with the 5X, but again, they both look pretty solid when you're just looking at a standard picture. Anyways, more testing to come with the brand new iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. Drop a comment, let me know what you think, if you're picking one of these up, which color you like more. Uh, but that's it for me for now, more videos to come, so please click that subscribe button. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.